Here's an example of a problem you might want to solve using the 3D equilibrium at a point equations. I have a uh, 72 foot tall tower. This is like a radio tower you might see when you're driving down the interstate. Um, and it's connected by three guy wires down to the ground to support it. So I have a, a red one, a blue one, and a green one that are supporting it. Uh, and the problem statement is that we want to find the tension in cable AC, that's this uh, blue one here, that would, if the uh, maximum allowable tension in any cable is 2,000 pounds. So we want to set the tension um, in, in cable AC uh, such that the maximum tension in any cable is 2,000 pounds. The first step in any problem is to draw our free body diagram. Here, I'm going to draw our free body diagram at point A. At point A, we have four forces acting on the point. We have our tension in cable AB. We have our tension in cable AC. And we have our tension in cable AD. The last force that I'm going to draw is the force of the tower. Now, uh, we need to get really good at identifying two force members. The tower has a pin connection at the bottom and a pin connection at the top, which means that there's only forces applied at two locations on the tower, and it's a two force member. I'll draw the force of the tower acting straight along its axis, and I'll label it as force tower. Now you might say uh, the force of the tower is obviously in compression if all these other forces are in tension, and you're probably right. But when I'm drawing my free body diagrams at a point, I always draw my forces pulling away in tension. And then if I ever get a negative answer, it automatically signifies that I have a compressive member. So this is just a really handy way I can use my sign convention to work for me. Um, so next thing we need to do is we have all these forces, and we need to represent them in vector form. So uh, you might remember that we can represent a force. Maybe we want to do F, A, B, and we want to represent it in vector form. Well, that's equal to the magnitude of the force, the magnitude of the force A, B, times a unit vector going in the direction uh, uh, between A and B. Um, and so the other way to say that is a unit vector. So we have the, the magnitude of the force. The unit vector is a position vector going from point A to point B, so just defining a position vector going between those two points, divided by the total length of that vector from point A to point B. So the unit vector is equal to the position vector divided by the length. So let's, let's write this out for um, cable AB. So let's start by writing a position vector. So we'll write the, con the position vector from point A to point B. To get from point A to point B, we need to go 33 or 56 feet in the x direction. That's this dimension right here. So 56i. And then we're going negative 33 feet, so minus 33j. And then we're in the in the y direction, and we're also going negative 72. We're starting up at A, remember, going to point B. We're going 72 feet in the z direction, so uh, minus 72 feet k. So that's our position vector. The next thing we need to do is we need to divide this by the length to get the unit vector. Um, so now we want to get the, to the unit vector uh, by dividing by the length. Um, so the length of this vector, the length of a, b is equal to the square root. We'll use the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. We have the square root of 33 feet squared plus 72 feet squared plus 56 feet squared. And the square root of all that, we get the length of AB is equal to uh, 97 feet. So I'll divide, so get my unit vector, I'll divide everything by 97 feet. I'll divide each term by 97 feet. So now uh, the units cancel out and we're left with um, a unit vector, which is just a unitless uh, vector that points in the direction that we want to go. Um, the last step in right in 
creating this to a force vector, so we want to get to a force vector, is to uh, multiply by the magnitude of the force. So I'll just multiply each term by the force in AB. And now I have a force vector for AB that I could solve. We could do the same thing for the force in the cable AC. If we look, uh, we have AC is 65 feet in the y direction and 72 feet in the z direction. That means that the length of cable AC is also 97 feet. FAC. You note that there's no x component to the, the direction in AC, so the i component is going to be 0. The j component is going to be. Uh, the J component is going to be FAC times 65 feet divided by the total length, 97 feet, J. And the K component is going to be minus FAC times 72 over 97 K. That's the force factor for AC. And we can do the same thing for force in direction of AD, so FAD. You'll know I actually used Pythagorean and triples uh, so that the length of all three cables was the same. Uh, they're all 97 feet, the J component of FAD and the K component of FAD. The last force factor that we need to write is the force in the tower. That's our easiest one because it's all in the negative Z direction. So the force of the tower is going to be 0i minus 0j minus the force of the tower k. So now we have our our three, uh, our three four forces all written in vector form, and now we can start trying to solve this problem. So I'm going to scroll it down just a little bit to give us some room to solve the problem. So if you remember, we have our equilibrium equation um, that we need to write. That's the sum of the forces in the x. some of the forces in the y, and some of the forces in the z. Those are our three equilibrium direction equations at a point, and they're all going to be equal to zero. So let's start with the x direction equilibrium equations. Well, in the x direction, we have um, all of the i components. The only two that really show up are a, b, and a, d. Uh, there's no I component for the tower or for cable AC. So we could write um, this is equal to FAB times 56 over 97 minus FAD times 63 over 97, and that's equal to zero. Rearranging this equation, we get FAB is equal to FAD times 63 over 56. Another way to read this is that FAB is greater than FAD. So to start this problem off, we're going to make an assumption. We're going to assume engineering is all about making assumptions. We're going to assume that FAB is equal to 2,000 pounds, because it's the larger of the two. It's also two kips. One kip is 1,000 pounds. And so then we can uh, solve this equation here for FAD. We have FAD is going to be equal to 1.78 kips. And so this checks out. So far, so good. We already have um, two of the cables, the force and two of the cables. And we can see that uh, they're both uh, equal to or less than 2,000 pounds. Moving on, we'll solve the sum of the forces in the y direction. I'll circle this second column here with all the j components in it. Those are all of our forces in the y direction. So if I wrote the sum of the forces in the y direction, I have negative FAB times 33 over 97 plus FAC times 65 over 97 
minus FAD times 16 over 97. And again, all that's equal to zero. I can then solve this, um, this equation. I have FAB, it's 2,000 pounds. I have FAD, it's 1.78 kips. And I can get FAC, and that's going to be equal to 1.45 kips. And so now, you know, we, we've proven that we're done. We have all three of our forces and our cables, and they're all less than 2,000 pounds. If I had solved and this one came out to be more than 2,000 pounds, then I would have to um, X out my assumption and restart. I would set FAC equal to 2,000 pounds and recalculate FAB and FAD. But my assumption was correct. The sum of the forces in the Z direction is going to be all the K components in my equilibrium equations. Now we have our uh, sum of the forces in the z direction. Again, this is equal to zero. And I can then solve this for the force in the tower. Um, I get the, the force in the tower. So the force in the tower is equal to negative 3.88 kips, or 3,880 pounds. Um, and the, the real key thing that we should highlight here is that we said we uh, assumed that that was probably going to be compression, and if we get a compression member, then we are going to get a negative sign, and, and this is negative, so um, that matches our assumption, which is good news. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to ask questions in the uh, comment section below. Uh, if you if you'd like to see more videos on this topic or other topics, I'm always open to suggestions. Thank you.